يا بلاك يا بلاك سانكي كاين زر كاين حارس فخفا اتا حدقا حمل لكم فازكن لان هصاون قول حيده لك حدقاس دميات برحب يني اخو ذا تيغراي ريجون ان نورثن ايثيوبيا بومبا از ا فيليج ستراك باي فامين no one here has enough to eat. Many are starving. Why? I don't know before hunger there was war last year the hills surrounding bomba erupted Tigray was at war with its own country, Ethiopia. In November 2020, Ethiopia began military operations against the region's ruling party, the Tigray People's Liberation Front. Villages and towns became front lines, attacked by a coalition of federal soldiers, militia groups and the army of a neighboring country, Eritrea. Tigrayans were cut off from the rest of the world. Atenuan's ceasefire was called in March 2022. But today, the consequences of the siege are devastating. <laughs> Fighting prevented farmers from planting crops. So this year, there's no harvest and the market stalls are barren. For the victims of war and hunger, there's no aid or medical center nearby. They must travel by foot to provincial towns like Abi Adi, a hundred kilometers from Bomba. Even there, resources are scarce. Dr. Tesaye runs a hospital that has barely any medicine, no electricity, and almost no gas. The doctor says no international aid has arrived. Yes, we need someone to help us. Everybody knows there is a big problem, but they are just talking about the problem, not about the solution. People are dying every day, every minute. We are crying uh, every time we see 
mothers crying due to death of their kids. Whether they and the other angels, they just watch us. That's what is happening here. Since the war began, more and more malnourished children are brought to the hospital. This is a one year and seven months old. She is uh, severely malnourished. He should have been on therapeutic feeding now, but uh, we are not uh, giving him milk because we don't have milk. He's just getting the oxygen and uh, some medications. He stayed here with this condition for the last two weeks. We could not give him six months back. He was treated for the same case, malnutrition. It improved and we sent him home. The mother couldn't feed him at home, so she came back. Because there is no food at home. don't have milk? Yeah, we don't have any milk, any plant in it. There is no therapeutic uh, food here. Okay. <laughs> so we are watching many patients dying of Cancer, malnutrition. So we are here just to watch them dying. Nothing else. Okay. The operation is not done here. We should take him to Makale, uh, either hospital, but uh, there is a difficulty in transporting him. So it's clearly an effect of the war. Before that, he may get the medication, even the nutritional support. All of it will help him. But now, as you can see, you cannot, you could do, you cannot do anything. We are uh, just uh, giving him supportive care only. We, we cannot give any other further treatment. Eleven years old, eight kilograms. The weight is eight kilograms, which is not uh, <coughs> After two days, the hospital will be devoid of any oxygen. So uh, even we, we may stop accepting patients due to this. We asked for fuel, there is no fuel. The, the car is, actually we, we only have one car, which is left from the looting. Under the siege, a full tank of petrol now costs $640. Transport is restricted to some small buses and vehicles for the few aid workers here. The towns are surrounded by makeshift camps filled with tens of thousands of people who have fled fighting in the countryside. No one knows the exact number of civilian casualties, but there are credible reports of dozens of massacres and sexual violence being used as a weapon of war. Away from the bullets and bombs, there is no escape from death. Civilians fall prey to the siege, like this elderly lady, starving in her bed.
With the town's few resources running out, those in desperate need for food and medical aid are forced to leave. They walk for days. They are heading for Mekele, the capital of Tigray. Since the beginning of the war, the population of the city has exploded with newly displaced people. This family is from Bomba. Like many of their neighbors, they left their homes in a dire search for food. To pay the rent for this shelter, this family of farmers must go to bed early. Tomorrow at dawn, they will have to beg on the streets. From morning to night, the family from rural Bomba roams the streets of Mekele. This is the richest and most modern city in Tigray, where once there was a hum of cars in traffic. Now there's a clutter of hoofs and horse-drawn carriages. Fuel is just too expensive to run a vehicle. This was once home to the elite. The Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, dominated Ethiopia for 30 years. Today in Mekele, people who are spared starvation rub shoulders with the extreme poverty of those displaced by war. <laughs> The war has eat all social classes, though many in Mekele have a roof over their heads. Collectively, the city is being punished, hardly any salaries are paid. Aside from a few generators, there's almost no electricity. Telecom and internet access has been cut off, but inventive people still find a way to communicate. What's going on is there is no connection in here. There's a blackout, there's no internet, there's no anything, no cell phones. So we're taking information, we're sharing videos, pictures, screenshots that come across the border or some people get it from the visa in the NGOs. Because these days, people are so desperate for information. So that's what we're doing here. Every night at this time. In 2020, while the rest of Ethiopia postponed regional elections, the government of Tigray refused. Against the will of the Ethiopian federal government, Debrestion Gebre Mekael was re-elected as the regional president.
uh, you know, human catastrophe is happening in Tigray because of this uh, siege and blockade. It's very clear. There is no transport, you know. There is no communication. There is no power. There is no banking. It's not just blocking. It's not the siege. And the whole thing is blockade. Is in every form. So they hold everything. There is no movement at all. There is no in and out. So they have uh, decided to kill us, to finish us or, uh, within this box. The Eider Hospital in Mekele is one of the few in the besieged region that still has a supply of medicines and formula milk. It's only running thanks to the voluntary work of the staff. The pediatric ward is struggling to cope with 20 malnourished babies, including little Arsama. At two months old, she weighs less than four pounds. Sindayo, her mother, suffered from chronic hunger during her pregnancy. If hundreds of bahats, In the heart of Tigray, the city of Aksum, Ethiopian Orthodox Christians say this religious site houses the Ark of Covenant, which contains the Ten Commandments of Moses. To Orthodox Christians, this is one of the most holy sites in Africa. But even this city hasn't been spared unemployment, hunger, and war. Firdi Mokonin was a tourist guide. He spent his life in Aksum. As you know that the people are getting hungry very, and uh, they have come to the church to pray and uh, bring the peace. The people here where they are gathering are taking holy waters. As you know that the federal government with the Eritrean troops as a blockage, the uh, humanitarian aid accesses but the people have nothing to eat. So they are trying at least. <laughs> they are just drinking <laughs> the holy water to fill pit their stomachs. <laughs> For eight months, Eritrean troops occupied parts of Tigray. In November 2020, Amnesty International said they surrounded this holy city. The mountain over there was a place where the Eritrean troops were camped. And they were targeted to loot the Ark of the Covenant here. 
So uh, as they were trying to come down, the young people were shouting and they start killing. So they start early in the morning killing the youngs till the whole night, door to door in every houses, mostly behind this mountain and in front of here. Even there was shot and dead inside this compound. So about 1,200 young, young people, elder people, children have been killed. This is what it happened, the massacre in Aksu. The exact number of deaths is undetermined. Amnesty International say hundreds were murdered during a nine-day killing spree. Back in Mekele, Sendayo has left the hospital and is taking baby Arsama back to the makeshift home. Little could be done for baby Arsama at the hospital. So Sendayo is looking for help elsewhere. She has decided to have her baptized along with other babies from their neighborhood. Faced with silence of the international community and with no peace in sight, it is towards their faith that the Tigrayan people turn. For Sendeo's family and so many others, it may be already too late. <laughs>